Let's get started adding the blocks for our mole move game. The first thing we need to do in this game is add two separate procedures. The first procedure we're going to define is called move mole. And like any procedure, to get it started, we're going to go to the built-in tab and pull out the definition drawer. And it's a procedure, so we're going to find our procedure block and pull it out onto the canvas. I'm going to rename this move mole. And there we go. Now the next thing we need to do is start working with our image sprite coordinates. And remember our image sprite is the mole that we have listed here. And way down at the bottom you're going to find mole.x and mole.y. I want you to pull those blocks out and throw them on the canvas. So we're working with the image sprite coordinates here. Next we're going to get a mathematical statement going. So we'll go back to our built-in tab, pull out our math drawer, and the first block we need is a multiply block. So that's the X, the old multiply sign. And I need two of those, so I'll copy this and plug one into mole.y as well. And then we're going to call a random fraction, and since it's numbers, that will also be in the math drawer. Copy that. So we're going to do the same thing essentially for both of these. Now I need one more math block and I'm going to pull out a subtract block and put them on the right side of each of these mathematical statements. Now this part of the mathematical statement has to do with the canvas size versus the mole size as we've already discussed in the course. So I'm going to go ahead and find my canvas. There it is. And I'll scroll down until I find a block called MyCanvas.Width. Next we'll go to our mole here and we'll find our mole.width block and we'll plug it in the right side here. Now I'm going to do the same thing with mole.y here, only it's going to have to do with the height of the canvas and the height of the mole. So we'll go to our canvas here. We'll find MyCanvas.Height. And we'll go to our mole and find mole.height. We'll plug that in there. So what we just did here was to add the mathematical statements we needed for this procedure. So in this case there were two statements, one for the mole's x position and one for its y position. And what we're doing with the random fraction is essentially randomizing the movement of the mole so it pops up all over the phone screen at random so the player never knows where it's going to pop up next. So what we're doing is making a random fraction here, something between 0 and 1, and we're multiplying that, the multiply sign here, by the canvas width minus the mole width. And the same thing holds true down here for mole y. We're using a random fraction somewhere between 0 and 1 times the canvas height minus the mole height. Okay, so let's move on to our second procedure that we need to create here, and that's going to be called update score. So let's go find a procedure block. We'll pull that out here, and we'll rename that update score. And we're going to work next with our score label. So I've got it listed as score here. You may have it written down as score label. Regardless, we want to set the score.text or the score label.text to a combination of two things. So we're going to join two things. So we're going to go to the built-in tab, open the text drawer, and grab a join block. Now what we're going to join is the text for score. And we're going to join that with a variable that we're going to call score. So I'll rename this variable score. And at the beginning of the game, we want the score to be zero. So we're going to add a number block, change that number to zero. And now our score will be zero when we start the game. Lastly, we need to go find this definition we just created in the My Definitions drawer. Grab our score block, and we're going to join the text score to the variable we just created called score. OK, so to break this down for you, like I just talked a bit about, we defined a variable called score, and this is meant to hold the score, or the number of times the mole is hit in this case. And we wanted to give that an initial value of zero, which we did by using a number block. And we also created this procedure called update score that's going to show the score in the score label. In this case, the one I just have listed as score here. 
So we've got our score label block here, the score.text, and we want that to read a combination of the word score, or just a string of text called score, and we want to join that with the actual score that we created up here.